Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about long run equilibrium in perfect competition. And just to skip ahead a bit, the condition that I'm going to explain is that in equilibrium in the long run, our firm profits, so that's pi, will be equal to zero. And this corresponds to price being equal to the minimum of firm average total cost. So P is equal to ATC min. In the first half of the video, I'm going to explain how we get to these conditions. In the second half of the video, I'm going to go through how the model adjusts towards this equilibrium. Right, so the really key thing to remember is that in the long run, firms are free to enter and exit. So there are no barriers to coming in or out of the industry. It is also good to keep in the back of your mind that our firms are price takers and this carries with it a number of conditions, including there are many firms, they produce an identical product, we have full information, etc. Lastly, when we talk about an equilibrium result, we're really thinking about given the conditions of the model, what is an outcome where our market participants have no reason to change their behavior? So we're looking for a stable outcome, let's say. The best place to start with all of this is just with our profit function for the firm. So profit is actually equal to quantity all multiplied by price minus average total cost. Now this way of expressing profits is pretty common. It comes from the following proof and I've done this in other videos so you can skip ahead if it's familiar to you. Firm profit is equal to total revenue TR minus total cost TC. The total revenue for the firm is just equal to the price that the good is being sold at P times the quantity that the firm is producing, so small q. And I'm going to rewrite total cost as being equal to average total cost times quantity. Now total cost as equal to average total cost times quantity just comes straight from our definition of average total cost, which is equal to total cost divided by quantity. We multiply both sides by Q and we get total cost is equal to average total cost times quantity. So once we have that, we factor out quantity and we get Q times open brackets, P minus ATC, close brackets, and that's our profit. And it is a really good way to express profit because it shows that the value of profit is dependent on the difference between price and average total cost. It also tells us that as long as quantity is positive, so the firm is producing something, there's really three possible outcomes. The first possible outcome is if price is greater than average total cost. And if this were the case, then the value of the term in the parentheses would be positive because we'll have a larger thing minus a small thing that will give us something positive. And this means since quantity is positive too, profit comes out as positive overall. Now, since we're in the long run, we have freedom of entry and exit, an identical product, full information, etc. This positive profit is going to be an incentive for other firms to enter the industry and set up their own companies in order to try to take some of those profits for themselves. So that's what happens if price is greater than average total cost. The second possible outcome is if price is less than average total cost. Now, if this happens, then the term in our parentheses, P minus ATC, that will be negative because we'll have a smaller value, that's the price, minus a larger value, average total cost. So the term in parentheses will be negative, quantity is positive, a positive times a negative is a negative, so profit comes out negative overall. Or to say in another way, the firms will be making a loss. And these losses will mean that firms will exit the industry. So that's what's going to happen for any price less than average total cost. Lastly, it can be the case that price falls exactly equal to average total cost. Now, if this is the case, the value of our term in parentheses will be equal to zero because price and average total cost cancel each other out. And so profit comes out to be equal to zero as well. Now, if this happens, there will not be any incentive for firms to either move in or out of the industry. And actually, it's this third result where the price is equal to average total cost. That will be our equilibrium result because the number of firms will remain stable. Now, if price is either above or below average total cost, well, these will not be equilibrium outcomes since these situations would lead to firms wanting to either exit or enter the industry. We still do have to explain why it's specifically the minimum of average total cost that will be where the price falls. 
To understand this, recall that the firm will set their quantity such that price is equal to marginal cost. So that's just profit maximization behavior for the perfectly competitive firm. I do have a video on this if you need this, I'll link to it below in the description. From our discussion that we just had, however, we also know that price is going to be equal to average total cost. So joining these conditions together, we see that in the long run equilibrium, price will be equal to average total cost and also equal to marginal cost. In addition, we also know that our marginal cost intersects or it's equal to average total cost when average total cost is at its minimum. So if I drew it out, it would look something like this. Marginal cost just comes through the bottom of average total cost. And it's this intersection that will be the only point that the price can be that satisfies both conditions of being equal to average total cost and equal to marginal cost. And so this will be where our long run equilibrium price will be. So now that we've established our long run equilibrium price condition, the next thing I'm going to do is just to explain the dynamics. So the adjustment process as the model goes from non-equilibrium to our long run equilibrium. And that's actually really done best with the aid of diagrams. So on the screen here on the left hand side, I have our market diagramming perfect competition. So we have a downward sloping demand curve and upward sloping supply curve. The price in the market is determined at the intersection of these two curves. So that's how we get P star and big Q star. Big Q star is our market output. On the right hand side, I have a cost diagram for a representative firm in the industry. So I've included marginal cost. It looks like a tick. And I've also put in our average total cost curve. Now the firm, as we said before, will set their level of production so that price is equal to marginal cost. So we get firm output, which is small Q star, just by drawing a line down from when the price line intersects marginal cost. The average total cost level for producing Q star can be found by drawing a line up from Q star until it hits our average total cost curve. So like this. And actually you can see that how I've drawn it here, our price is above average total cost. So in this case, as we said before, our firm is going to make positive profits. We can actually really easily see these profits visually on our diagram. So let's put in total revenue. I'm just going to use a green box. That will be the rectangle price times quantity. Now you can see that this green box is larger than total costs, which would be the red box here. That's average total cost times quantity. So our total revenue more than covers our total cost. Now the firm makes a profit equal to the difference between these two boxes. I'll just color in that area light blue, that will be profit. Now this firm profit will be an incentive for other firms to come into the industry to try and get some profit for themselves. Now we model this influx of firms into the industry by increasing our market supply. So our market supply will shift out to the right. And what this shift is going to do is it will reduce the market price and it will continue to shift in this fashion until price is exactly equal to average total cost minimum. And that will eliminate all of the profits in the industry. So as I have it here, this will be at supply curve S2. Now at that point where price is exactly equal to average total cost minimum, that's our long run equilibrium. There are no profits to be made and you can see that our total revenue, that's the green box, is exactly equal to total cost, that's the red box. Now just to have a look, I will put both curves up so you can see that from our original supply curve S, as a result of price being greater than average total cost, our new firms have come into the industry, market supply shifts to S2, and you can see that as a result of that our price has dropped, so P prime is less than P star. Now, less important to the adjustment towards equilibrium, but still kind of interesting, is that market output, which is big Q, will be higher. And this makes sense because we have more firms in the industry. Firm output, however, so small Q, actually reduces, and that's just in response to the lower price that the firms face. Really, however, it is the idea that our price falls to be equal to the minimum of average total cost. That's the important part. That's how we get to our long run equilibrium if price starts off higher than average total cost. All right, let's think about the opposite case then. Let's think if price is less than average total cost. So maybe something like this. 
Well, as we said before, this means that the firms are going to be making a loss, so negative profit. We can see this visually. Our total revenue, again, I'll just use the green box. That's price times quantity. This box is now smaller than total costs, which is average total cost times quantity. So revenue doesn't cover costs and the firm is making a loss. Now the value of that loss will be equal to the difference between the two boxes. I'll color that in purple. Now this loss means that firms will start to leave the industry and this is going to reduce our market supply. This reduction in supply shifts the whole curve to the left and this has the effect of increasing the price. Our supply curve will shift like this until price is exactly equal to average total cost. So something like what I have on the screen here. And you can see again that at this point, total revenue is exactly equal to total cost, so profit is zero. Now just again, putting both curves up on the screen, supply reduces from S to S2. You can see that the price has increased, so P prime is greater than P star. You can also see that market output reduces, so big Q prime is smaller than big Q star. And that's explained by our firms moving out of the industry, but firm output increases. So small Q prime is bigger than Q star. And that happens in reaction to the higher prices. Now, just to revise all of that, if price is greater than average total cost, firms move into the industry, market supply shifts out to the right, it increases, that lowers the price until it's exactly equal to average total cost minimum. If the price is less than average total cost, we get the opposite sort of dynamic. Firms will be making a loss, they exit the industry. This reduces market supply, shifting it to the left until the price increases until it's equal to average total cost minimum. So really at the heart of it, in the long run in perfect competition, it's market supply that's moving us towards equilibrium, either shifting to the left or to the right as firms exit or enter the industry in response to profits or losses. The only stable place, however, so the only equilibrium point is when profits are exactly equal to zero and price is equal to average total cost min. All right, I hope that helped. That's our long run equilibrium in perfect competition. If it did, please like and subscribe. I hope you guys are doing well, keeping happy and safe.